All right, David Harry here. And in this video, I'm going to give a basic explanation of what the Rode VXLR Plus is, and also where and when and why you may want to use something like this. Now, I appreciate there's going to be a bunch of people out there who already know what this is going to be for and where and when and why to use it, but I'm quite sure that there'll be some people who are not entirely sure what this is for, and also some people that may realize that something like this is going to be very useful for them. So primarily, the basic function of the VXLR Plus is to convert one type of audio cable to another. And as we can see here, it's got XLR on one end, and then on the other end here, it has 3.5 millimeter jack. So that is effectively the conversion of one type of cable to another. But the twist to this little block is that it is also a direct current to direct current power converter or a DC to DC power converter. So in that, what it does, it takes 48 volts, which comes in via the XLR end. And then inside, it will convert it to a much lower voltage, roughly around 5 volts, which is then used to drive the likes of lavaliers or any type of other ECM microphone with ECM standing for electric condenser microphone so what we're looking at here then is just an example of a typical large diaphragm studio condenser microphone and if you have a look underneath here what we can see is an XLR jack socket now that particular jack socket for this particular microphone does basically two jobs one it allows the audio to go down the cable in a balanced format and also it will directly take phantom power from whatever the microphone is plugged into whether that be a mix and console or just even a phantom power supply or preamp so essentially what this microphone needs is 48 volts worth of phantom power in order to make it work and so now what we're looking at is a Rode Video Micro, which is also another type of condenser microphone. But unlike the studio condenser microphone, this particular microphone doesn't require 48 volts worth of phantom power. And the reason for that is, is because this is what's called an electric condenser microphone. And an electric condenser microphone basically just means it has a pre-polarized element in it, which means that it doesn't require the same type of voltages as as a traditional condenser microphone hence it needs only about two and a half volts up to maybe six volts in order to make this work now what we're looking at here is a Rode lavalier go which is a lavalier microphone and very much just like the Rode video micro this too is an electric condenser microphone so in the front here it has a very tiny capsule in it which is of the electric condenser variety just exactly the same as the capsule that's in the Rode Video Micro. So once again, this only requires a small amount of voltage by comparison to the studio microphone. Now what we're looking at here is a typical example of a USB audio interface. And this one is a Behringer Euphoria UMC202HD. Now part of its job is to send phantom power to the likes of the studio condenser microphone. So as you can see here on the front, this has got two XLR inputs in. Now both of these are capable of sending 48 volts phantom power down the XLR cable to power a studio condenser microphone, which requires 48 volts worth of phantom power. Now, as you've probably guessed, the phantom voltages which are coming out of this particular audio interface are far too high for the voltages required for the Rode Lavalier Go and the Rode Video Micro. So in that instance, that's when we would use the VXLR Plus, which will drop the power from the sockets here down to a more manageable voltage for an ECM microphone. So now what we're gonna do is see what the voltage is that comes out of the back of the VXLR Plus once it's plugged into something which will supply 48 volts phantom power. So what I'm gonna do is use the multimeter and test the voltage coming out of the back end of the VXLR Plus. 
So as we can see there, it is just a smidgen over five volts. Now the reason why that five volts is very important is because if you were to use a different type of XLR to 3.5 millimeter adapter and it was wired so that it sent the voltages straight through and you plugged it directly into something like the Rode Video Micro or even the lavalier what you're going to do is damage the capsules on these things because they are only rated to run at anywhere between about two volts to about say six and a half seven volts so supplying 48 volts directly to either one of these two devices is going to damage it but basically once you kind of connect that up to the circuit as it were that's now going to be safely sent 5 volts instead of 48 volts if you were to use the wrong type of cable which directly powered the microphone with 48 volts. Now whilst you might think that the chances are very slim that you would want to use something like a Rode Video Micro or another ECM like a lavalier within a workflow which would typically be 48 volts phantom power and also XLR which probably would be consistent of mixing consoles and the likes you may actually end up in a scenario with a video camera that only uses XLR and therefore will only be capable of 48 volts phantom power and if that is the case that's when you would want to use a VXLR plus or basically in any scenario where your only source of power or your only source of recording can only supply 48 volts phantom power down an XLR cable okay so there we have it then hopefully people have found this video interesting and hopefully it's going to give people a really good idea as to why they may want to have one of these VXLR pluses within their audio arsenal anyways I'm David Harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now